Welcome to another episode of Long Distance Short, GiftBaskets'Overseas.com's podcast, where we talk to real people about the triumphs and tribulations in all kinds of long distance relationships. Your host is Allie Winters, an international gift consultant who's found success in her own long distance romances and friendships. And here's today's topic how to dream big and deal with toxic relationships. Allie is talking to Emily Adams, coach, speaker, and writer, also the host of her own podcast, The Emily Adams Show. We'll be talking about how to identify red flags in long-distance relationships, as well as the risks of continuing bad relationships. Plus, we've got tips on ending toxic relationships, understanding yourself outside of relationships, and remembering what you truly deserve out of life. Let's jump right in, Allie. Hi, everybody. My name is Allie, and this is Long Distance Short, your long-distance relationship podcast. We are back with our super motivational anniversary episode, which is episode number 10, and I'm already excited to start so, how Emily? Um, how are you doing? I am doing very well. How are you? Great. So, actually, I would like to start off with some story that I know from one of my acquaintances, uh, because actually, this story made me think about what I would like to talk with my guests in our next episode. So, this is about long distance relationship. She was in such a kind of relationship. It wasn't uh, quite toxic, not like that, but she used to complain about some situations from time to time. And after discussing that with her, her uh, partner. It's a pity, but nothing really changed. So uh, she felt like she was not quite happy in this relationship, but they were together for quite a long time, like over three years, I think. And she saw that probably she would accommodate and accept the situation later. And more than that, there was a lot of pressure in the relationship, for example, for her future plans, like she was expected to convert to another religion. Uh, She had to learn a totally different language to find a work in the country Uh, she had never lived and uh, she had to resign from her job back then. All the sacrifice was only for the sake of being uh, together with her long distance partner. And this was uh, her who had to do most of the job. Also needless to say, there were a lot of cultural differences between the two of them. And that was the main reason for their online fights, uh, if we can call it so. So unfortunately, the difference were too huge and it was hard to meet somewhere in the middle. This story made me think, Uh, basically of another aspect of an LDR. Like, what if some people do not feel good but still keep sacrificing their uh, resources and their time? Uh, What if one, after discovering that it's not what they want in life, realize that there is no way back where, well, you know, there really is? And uh, yeah, Emily, I know you yourself know more (laughs) about it, more than me. Yeah. So when it comes to any kind of relationship, whether it's long distance or even in person, and when we keep sacrificing and we're not getting any, anything in return, it really makes us question whether it's worth it. But a lot of times we kind of have that mindset of a, we may not feel like we are worthy of more or that we can, you know, have happiness or try to meet in the middle or, we just keep giving and giving and giving until we're completely done. And I have been on that side of giving and giving until I was completely done and to the breaking point. So yeah, definitely I can relate with that. Okay. uh, What was your story? Basically, how did you come to this philosophy uh, of your life? Yeah. So um, a little backstory. I, so I was raised and born and raised in a different culture, which is the Amish culture in, um, their dating is very different and relationships are very different. And when I left and I started, I got married and it was a very verbal abusive marriage and a lot of alcohol. And he, he was an alcoholic and, but I felt stuck, right? I already, I had one child with him. And as I was getting ready to leave, 
I found out I was pregnant with my next son. So I felt like I had to stay to make it work, but I saw all the signs of it being an unhealthy relationship, but I wasn't there yet to take that leap and break that off. And part of that was I was scared. I was scared, you know, of being a single mom. I was also scared of just not being in a relationship because Mm -hmm. I think we use relationships so much as a title, you know, all our friends are in a relationship. So now we have to be in a relationship. This is the normal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not, it's not normal for you to be single because everyone in your friends are in a relationship. Mm-hmm. And um, I kind of came to the point of it was either spend my whole entire life in this situation or because I, we tried counseling, we tried uh, many different things and it, I tried, you know, sacrificing everything. And I was very miserable. And, um, after knowing that counseling wasn't going to work, I was like, well, I can either sit here and settle for this, or I can break this off and start a new life. And when you go to break off a relationship, it doesn't matter whether you're divorced or you're going, you know, you've never been married it's still very hard because you have all those emotions and those feelings and those attachments. Your family may have already fallen in love with the person. And now you have to go and say, yeah, it's not working out. So you might be getting judgment from your friends, your family. And the, the way you can come to the conclusion is if that person isn't fulfilling you and you're not happy and like, you're not really enjoying your time with them, then you need to start asking deeper questions. But those deeper questions can be really scary. You know, what is it that's not making me happy in this relationship? Is it because he's not giving me something or she's not giving you something? Or is it because there is a part of you that's never been fulfilled? So there's many different ways you can go into if you're in a situation where you feel like you need to get out of a toxic relationship is start doing the internal work. You don't have to go tell the whole whole world right away that you're going to break it off Mm -hmm. because, but more so doing the internal work. And that's as easy as starting writing out, you know, thinking back as to what I did as I thought back as to, you know, why did we get together to start with? Like what was there for us? And honestly, when I look back, I had changed as a person as well because I used to drink a lot. So as soon as I got pregnant, I stopped drinking. So then we didn't have, like, we didn't have anything in common, right? So when you start looking back and people change, like it happens all the time. And uh, I also know now looking back as I was looking in my relationship, I was looking for someone to fulfill the things that I wasn't fulfilling myself. Yeah. And you mentioned, uh, this uh, thing like you need to understand what makes you happy right but uh, basically sometimes it's not that clear i remember the very famous quote we get to this world alone and we die alone there's nobody else to support us at this yes and and that's not saying that you won't find someone that it loves you unconditionally because it happens all the time people find each other and they're like they are in love and that's good. But at the same time, if you don't love yourself, you're going to be projecting things. And that means like, oh, well, I wore this dress or I wore this shirt and she never complimented me. That means now that they don't love me or they didn't do this for me. Now they don't love me. Like whatever that is, you have to internally really go in and just love yourself. And that doesn't mean that you have to be perfect by any means before you get into a relationship because you can still be working through something, but really keep the communication open with your partner as to say, like, this is one of the things I struggle with. So that way you can have that communication, but self-love and self-worth is huge when it comes to a relationship, because you have to make sure, you know, you are worthy no matter what anyone has said. And some of this stuff can go as deep as your childhood. Maybe someone said something to you when you were in third grade or you had a crush on someone and they broke your heart and now you're just kind of a little bitter, but you thought you moved past of it, past it. So sometimes it's very deep rooted into why we don't feel worthy. And I always thought, you know, like I am a very confident person. I know who I am. I know what I want. And I feel like, you know, I am worthy for the most part, but I was struggling. And when I dug deep, there was an incident when I was in school where 
I wanted to hang out with a certain group of girls and they told me I was not good enough. Mm -hmm. And so now I knew, okay, so this is still an issue. So now I get to process it. I know this was the incident. So, you know, one of the easy things you can do is write a forgiveness letter or write whatever you would say if you were back into that situation. So I just wrote down everything I would say. And at the end, my ending was, I know I'm worthy, even if I'm not in your circle of friends. I don't need that circle of friends to feel worthy. So it's kind of like a doing a releasing activity over it and knowing, okay, now I can heal from that and move on. So that's what I would say. I got the goosebumps. <laughs> so things, that last phrase. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So things are very uh, deep rooted. And sometimes in relationships, you know, we bring a lot of different baggage into our relationships and we don't even need, know it. You know, we could have an amazing life and be like, oh no, I didn't have any trauma in my life. But, um, really there's we do have let's be honest we do have (laughs) (laughs) but you know the 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 average person is like no I don't I didn't have any trauma in my life you know this is how I view things but if we really dig deep there was some incident at some point in our life where it was painful for us and that now makes us hold back or that now makes us act a little bit different and this is the thing that goes in relationships you know if we don't walk into our relationships knowing what we want and, you know, being confident in who we are. And when it comes to worthiness, like I see this all the time where, um, especially women will not ask for what they want or we end up settling. And I don't know, you know, from a guy's standpoint, I can't sit here and say that guys do the same thing. I'm sure that some of them do. Um, but we settle because we think, well, that's as good as we can get. But what if we shifted to, eh, you know, this, this is okay, but maybe I need to, if I don't feel like this is like the one, maybe I need to keep looking instead of settling. Cause when we settle all at the end, in the end of the day, like your relationship's not going to work because at some point you're going to realize you settled and now you need to get out of the relationship. And you know, there is some kind of stigma in our society that if you kind of date a lot of people, for example, you had one partner that you broke up or somebody broke up, then another one and then another one. And they kind of think that maybe this is something wrong with you. Like why you cannot settle with anybody of them, right? But actually in reality, it's not so. I mean, uh, what if like the next partner is uh, much, much better for ourselves, right? Better than the previous one. I think that's a totally okay thing. (laughs) Yes. Or if you, um, you're like, oh, I'm just dating. But you know, when you say you're just dating, people assume you've just, you're just dating one or you're going in my theory, when I hear that I'm dating, I'm like, okay, I'm dating. So now I get to choose because I'm not exclusive in any relationship. So that means I can go out on as many dates as I want. But other yeah, people, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So other people will view that maybe in a negative way that, oh, you should just talk to one person at all times. Well, that's fine if that works for you. But also at the same time, you know, I don't want to jump into a relationship if it's not what I want. Like there's plenty of fish in the sea on both sides. So if you start going into this and it's one thing, you know, I think people automatically say, if you're dating, they think that you're, um, they kind of give you that vibe off as, oh, they're sleeping around a lot. That's not necessarily what everyone is doing, but I think there's kind of that, um, vibe around it when you say, you know, we're dating or if you're in a relationship for three months and realize it doesn't work out and then you jump right back into dating, everybody has their opinion. Like, oh, you should take some time. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe five that, months, maybe you can start living together and see how it goes as if this is the last person on this planet. Really? <laughs> yes. It's what you and your partner are comfortable with. And if you don't have a partner and you're just getting into dating, it's with what you're comfortable with. You'd you are your own person. You are, you know, whether you need to take the time to, to heal, or you know, whether you're ready to start dating or not. And it's interesting that we're talking about this now. I, um, after my divorce, I was like, you know, I think I'm ready to start dating again. And, um, one of my best friends was like, but you haven't even been divorced for like six months. And I'm like, 
was there a timeline? Yeah. So what? yeah. And, <laughs> but, but with her saying that I was like, I started questioning myself. Like I allowed her projection to come in and I was like, Whoa, maybe I'm not ready. And then I started doubting myself. And then I was like, wait a minute, that was her projection, her story. That's not my story. I am ready and I'm going to take the leap and go. So we, we can pick up on people's opinions and their projections, but we get to actually choose. We get to choose if we're ready or not, no matter if your parents or your friends or whoever thinks you're ready. Yeah, it's really hard, but we need to learn how to do it and to find the courage to tell yourself no or yes, I'm ready for it or I'm not ready. Absolutely. Totally agree. And now a few words for our sponsors. What's the best way to send beautiful bouquets and luxurious romantic gifts around the globe fast? Today's sponsor, RussianFlora.com. With thousands of flowers and gifts to choose from, and the best round-the-clock service in the world, as well as protection from scams when you order, the choice is clear for international flower delivery. Send your emotions over the oceans with RussianFlora.com. So, well, after you realize that this is not what you actually wanted in your relationship, and you understood what it could basically lead to, you had to stop it. You had to say, hey, we've lived for quite a long time or not quite a long time. We have children, but we need to break up. So how can one find the courage to tell it to the partner? So how to, how to do it? Mm -hmm. In a relationship, um, you know, there was a relationship, you know, I was talking to someone and we, you know, had conversation, but I realized like it, the conversation, what wasn't going, you know, we had connection on some levels, but not all the levels. And it's really hard to be the one to start the conversation. And I really recommend before you start the conversation of, you know, our relationship isn't going anywhere. Really, um, don't tie anything to the outcome. So don't have any expectations with the outcome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You get to go in and you get to view it as I get to go in and say, you know, this is how I feel. I'm honoring myself by doing this and you don't get to control their reaction. When you go in it thinking, I don't get to control their reaction. They're going to react however they want but I still know this is the right decision and I stand firmly. And when you stop trying to control their reaction and you go in to say, Hey, we need to talk. And this is going to be very, very uncomfortable because you don't know if they're going to get upset. You don't know if they're going to say mean, hurtful things. Um, but when you go in and say, you know, we need to have this conversation, you start saying, you know, the things that, you're having issues with and if they're not open to start working through those issues or hear you out that's just confirmation that you were right and you need to move on now if they come to you and be like you know can we work this out and start having conversations sometimes relationships can be saved that way mm -hmm, yeah so it's you know starting a conversation is probably seems like the most scariest thing to do because you don't know. It's like this big fear of like, I have no idea how I'm going to start this conversation and don't text them or send them a message prior. Like I am a firm believer if do it either in person or if it's a long distance relationship, try to do it over video chat so you can really see each other's face and kind of body language because sometimes text messages or just messages in general without a, you know, a facial expression can be taken the wrong way. Yeah. I actually was going to ask this question, like what is the best way to do it? Okay. Yeah, totally. Long distance relationship. I would say, you know, try to do the video chat. If you don't want to meet in person, you know, clearly sometimes you don't want to spend the money to go see them, to tell them this. But, you know, at least do the courtesy of like FaceTiming or however you communicate and, you know, have this conversation, say, you know, we need to talk. This is how I'm feeling. And um, throughout this time while you're having this talk, really keep reminding yourself the way you feel and that you're honoring your feelings. Because if not, it can be easy for them to talk you into staying. Yeah, and into... And they can manipulate you basically yes. without your realizing it. Mm -hmm. 
And then you keep going in the cycle of, oh my, I forgot. I should have like, I should have stuck to it and now I'm still stuck in this and now it's just going to keep going two or three times before I can finally be like enough is enough. And that can be a very difficult thing as well, but definitely try to do it in person or, you know, across for those that are in long distance relationship, do it across video chat. So it's not a message. It's more so, you know, a face to face conversation. Yeah. One has to find courage for that. Certainly. Okay. And uh, after this is basically done, um, maybe there are some tips to understand what we really want. Yeah. So afterwards, after, you know, you've gone through this and um, really take some time, if you haven't done it prior to actually, I think it's really powerful to sit down and without any limitations, if you could order your partner off of like, Amazon or a website and you could design them exactly the way you would want to design them. If you sit down and you write this out, everything that you want, and then start really being like things that are really deal breakers. Like what is a deal breaker? So for example, I'll give you one of mine. One of my deal breakers is smoking. I cannot stand the smoking and I don't care if they have everything else, but they smoke, I still won't date them mm -hmm. because it's a hard, it's a hard no. Right. So when you really go through this list of like everything that you want in a partner, and it's just not about the physical side, but more like the emotional side, you know, what are you really looking? Do you need someone that loves you? Do you need, or someone that's affectionate? Do you need, um, a person that is going to be there to support you or whatever it is, like write it all out, like what your dream person would be. And once you have that list, then you can know like what you, what your hard knows or what your deal breakers are. And it's okay if you have a list of deal breakers, like if you don't like the drinking, if you don't like the smoking, or if they're whatever is off like you are allowed to make your own list. You don't need to get your friends' opinions. You don't need to have your parents' blessings on this. This is your list. This is what you want. And this is what you're going to attract. If you don't put in the work to know what you want, and you'll be just be like, oh, whatever happens, happens. Whatever comes along, comes along. That's the energy you're putting out. Mm -hmm. So basically that's what you're going to attract. And so if you our final image is the prince on a white horse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if that's your dream person, then go ahead. That's not my dream person. I don't want a prince on a white horse, but, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yes, from, from Cinderella. <laughs> yeah. But in, you know, in, in the other thing in a relationship, especially if you go after a breakup, like if you go through, you know, breaking off a relationship, it can sometimes be easy to get caught up in the victim mode without us knowing it. And I say this because even our friends will do it like, Oh, I'm so sorry. You guys broke up. Like, you know, screw that person. They weren't good for you anyways. And they start bashing the person. Right. Yeah. So you start feeling, Oh yeah. You know that it poor me, you know, like, yeah, it just sucks that I'm going through this, but really no, it was a lesson for you. And it was somehow made you grow as a person. So when you go through this, think about like, what did I learn through this relationship? You're mm -hmm. going to learn something in every relationship. And now that I've learned this, how can I be even better in my next relationship? Don't play the victim. Like if you need to have a few days just to process the feelings of loss or anger or whatever comes up, process those feelings, but don't sit there. Because if you start still not processing these feelings and you're still feeling like the victim person, guess what? That's what you're going to attract. That's the people you're going to attract when you start dating again, because you're still wired that way. But if you process yourself, like that was a good learning um, experience. And now I'm going to attract even something better. Like it's not going to go backwards for you. If you think it's going to go backwards, it will, but you yeah. have to think, you know, okay, so I thought he was really good. Guess what? I'm going to attract even someone even better. And that's kind of like a shift in your mindset. And for those that don't believe in, you know, the universe or the attraction or manifesting, like you are constantly manifesting whether you want to or not. And also for those that 
may be single that might be starting getting ready to look into a relationship or even if you are in a relationship especially long distance relationship i would say um do look at the five love languages and understand what your partner's love languages are oh because yeah um, yeah i've read the article on that this is a really good book mm, worth reading for everyone Really? Yes, it's it's very, and it's it makes you open up. So I think there's actually a free um, on the website. It's free. You can just Google like the five love languages, and you take this quiz, and it tells you what your love language is. And mine was spot on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this can be detected quite easily nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would say it takes five minutes. Do that, and you can even do it with your partner, whether you're in person or long distance or whatever. Like. So you understand how they feel loved the most. And I think this is a really powerful thing as well. But knowing this about yourself, like my love language is being affectionate. I like, like touch, physical touch is mine. So if I am looking for a relationship, if the guy does not want to, that's not really his thing, then we may not connect that well. Right. Or it, probably there will be more um, struggles. Yeah, you would need to do more job on your relationship, and you have to be prepared for that, because two people are totally different, and there can be misunderstandings. But if two are ready to work on that, maybe that would work out. Who knows, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so w what is the best way to understand like who we are, what we need in life, and what we actually deserve? Yeah, that is such a good question. So um, no matter where you are in life, it doesn't matter at every point in your life, someone is always projecting things. And um, you can see this in, in your relationship as well, where people will project different things on your relationships. They'll tell you, you know, you're never going to make it in your relationship. Or if yeah. you're single, or if you're single, they will say, you know, um, you're not ready to date or you waited too long to date. Those are all just projections. Those are all just stories they have created for you. They're not yours. And maybe you, they're even based on their own experience. And maybe that, that experience it was not quite well. So they think everybody would fail, right? Absolutely. And if you're thinking these things, then you can actually reprogram your brain to stop thinking these things. And the way you do that, if you look at a situation and we're going to use an example of like someone told you that you're not ready to date and now you're questioning whether you're ready to date or you don't know if it's a projection or not, what you can do is sit down. It takes like five minutes, sit down and ask yourself, are you really ready to date? And the amazing thing is we have, we always have the answer within us. It's just taking time to find it. When you write this on your, you can write it on a piece of paper, just ask, am I ready to date? And then just start writing whatever comes to your mind. And when you don't, don't read it right away, like keep writing. And once you're, once you feel like you're done writing, go back and read it. And look how much, look kind of like what kind of patterns are coming up. Is it, I'm ready to date, but I'm scared. I'm ready to date, but I'm afraid to, I'm going to fail. So if you see you're scared and you're afraid to fail, those would be the points that I would start working on reprogramming. And what I would do, I would rewrite those sentences to be, I am ready to date. Even though it seems scary right now, it's going to be amazing because that's one better thought. If you can go from I'm ready to date, but I'm scared to I'm ready to date, but it's going to be amazing. That's, that's awesome. But a lot of people can't jump that far mm -hmm. so just think of a one step better thought, And you keep doing this. If you keep doing this work and you keep realizing every time you think, Oh, I'm ready to date, but I'm scared. Wait a minute. It may be scary, but it's going to be amazing you're slowly shifting that. And you can do that with anything that anyone projects on you. And once you become aware of like your thoughts and aware of the, the projections that people put on you and the things that will trigger you. So for projections, if someone says, you know, you should do this and then they'll date you. No, wait, wait a minute. You get to ask yourself, is that my truth? 
just because that's my best friend saying that to me does not mean that that's my truth. So yeah, and it also um, connects to, to this long distance relationship. I know a lot of stories of Western uh, men who would like to date, for example, some Russian woman, and they are quite uh, scared because maybe they think there will be a lot of different difficulties, maybe language barrier, or maybe just the fact that they would, you know, leave in different countries. But in reality, we have so many clients who end up living together. Yes, absolutely. And especially when it comes to long distance relationship, just because everyone says that it may be hard, that's not really your story. If you've never tried it, how do you know that it's hard? Or if you want to try it and you have all these doubts, maybe you just go in it with an open mind, like, oh, this could work out. Like this is going to work out. If you think of it that way, it kind of goes right back to the energy of of the way, the things that you project out. If you think like it's going to be hard and difficult, then that's what you're going to get. But if you think it's going to be amazing, then long distance relationship could definitely work. You just have to have an open mind about it. Or you go in it with like a clean slate of just like, no matter what anyone says to me, or no matter what my past experiences is, I want to give it 100%. Like I want to go into this long distant relationship with 100% and give it my all and going in it with no past experience, nothing else. Like it could be an amazing, it could be your best experience and you could find, you know, the love of your life. Yeah, exactly. And maybe we are just thinking, oh, maybe this person had this experience and they know better uh, because they've been there. Uh, But actually, in reality, everybody has different stories and uh, we have to remember about that. Their experience is not our experience. Exactly, because we get to have our own. Yeah. Yeah, so I think like one of the the biggest things I would advise is really practice self-love and self-worth and either, you know, this is just going to make your relationship even better. And it's also going to, if you're not in a relationship, it's just going to make you an overall better person. Practice your self-love, your self-worth, know that you have all the answers within you and it makes you a more of a confident person, do the work around it. And when I say self-love, that doesn't mean like going and buying yourself stuff, but really understanding what fills you up and what makes you happy. And then if you're not in a relationship and you're wanting to get in a relationship, understand what your dream relationship looks like. What does that partner look like? What, what are you doing together? What do you need support with? that kind of thing and start like doing that activity. And then for both that, those that are in relationships and those that are not really be aware of where your thoughts are. If you think the relationship is going to fail, change those thoughts. What if it's not going to fail? What if it's going to be the most amazing thing and things are back on track and they become incredible? So really be aware of your thoughts. So I would say self-love, self-worth, be aware of your thoughts and do some identity work to know who you are as a person as well. Okay, thank you so much, Emily. Uh, There was a lot of uh, really motivational and I would say really precious information. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, So we will see you, our listeners, in a month's time. And of course, love yourself, love other people, and just be positive. Thanks for listening to Long Distance Short, giftbasketsoverseas.com's podcast with real people in real long-distance relationships. Make sure to subscribe and keep tuning in for a new episode every month. If you have any questions or ideas for a future podcast, make sure to drop us a line at podcast at giftbasketsoverseas.com. That's podcast at giftbasketsoverseas.com dot com.